All right, this is our next episode of True Wrestling Fans Discussions. We're going over Goldberg's WCW run. I'm your host, Mike. I'm Frank. Let's get into this, man. Th- this guy right here was, I'd say, the best thing that ever came out of the WCW power plant by far. Well, maybe the, the he... only good thing that came out of the WCW power plant. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, yeah. I mean, I don't know about you, but when I first saw him on Nitro, I, I I really thought that Bischoff had gone above and beyond so bad as to really get an Austin lookalike in, in Goldberg because he had the goatee, he had the bald head, he had the black trunks. Yeah. I mean, I was just waiting for this guy to stun somebody in the ring and go, "Okay, we've got a we got a copycat here." But right. he, I never uh, I never looked at him like that. I, I've heard that from a lot of people, but I never really. I thought it at first when when he made his debut, only because you look at the trunks, you look at the coaching yeah. and everything. And, and but he was a lot, he was a lot bigger. And once you saw him get in the ring, total different style. Yeah, unfortunately, he just could, he really couldn't wrestle. And I mean, but he wasn't really there to, to give you a twenty minute match. Yeah. He was pretty much there to give you a spear, a jackhammer, and to go home. Now. He was actually, it was funny because he he was, nobody, a lot of people don't know this, but he was going to be in WWE in 1996. Mm -hmm. Right, yeah, he he went Um, over, he went up there. Yeah, he went up to talk to Vince, and God only knows what Vince would have made him his name be, because Lord only knows. Um, But he was actually, he was approached by Sting and Lex Luger to, to be a professional wrestler, and he started hanging out with all of them. He actually started wrestling as, with the name Bill Gold. In the, in the very beginning. Uh, his first match was June 23rd, 1997 in WCW. It was a dark match on Nitro. He had defeated Buddy Lee Parker. Not saying much. Uh, he had several other matches against top WW, WCW stars, such as Chip Mintron, uh, Buddy Landell, Hugh Morris, and Chad Fortune. These are living legends of WCW. Okay, I'm kidding. They're not. Yeah. Um, and on September 22nd, 1997, on Nitro, he made his debut as Bill Goldberg, defeating Hugh Morris, who was one of the perfect guys to get in the ring with. Because even though Hugh Morris wasn't successful in his wrestling career, he knew the wrestling business and he knew how to get a guy over. Him and, and uh, Steven Regal were the perfect two guys in WCW to get anybody to actually wrestle a match. And that the booker at the time was uh, Kevin Sullivan. And he wanted him to be mysterious. He wouldn't let him talk on the microphone. Uh, he just, he wanted him to go in the ring, do what he had to do. And what really took away from it was, well, Shivani was always known for this. If, if you had a match in the ring, the only thing they were ever talking about was the NWO, Hogan, mm-hmm. Nash, and all of them. Regardless of what kind of match you're having in the ring, you they weren't paying attention to it. So if you go back and you see the first few Goldberg matches, you'll notice that they don't even really notice guys in the ring for the five, six minutes. And then this match is over and off he goes. So they did this for a few weeks where he would just he would constantly face these random guys, just take them out. And that was it. Um he they, he they also they wanted it to be one to two minute victories for him. They wanted to show his dominance in the ring. Also, mainly for the fact that he was still training. To yeah, be it was wrestling. very he was very green, and he um, so they had to make the matches short. Going back just a little bit, Jr. is the one who got him that interview in WWE in '96 because mm-hmm. Jr. is a big football guy. Um, and as we know, Goldberg was a football player, played in the NFL. NFL yeah. um, I believe they were both from o- both from Oklahoma. I believe Jr. and Goldberg originally. So he was familiar with him. He got him the interview. But apparently when he goes up there, he was very like nonchalant about it. And he didn't really care. He was just like trying to he was just asking him how much he could get paid. He had like no passion for the business, which later on plays itself out that he just pretty much just wanted a paycheck. Um, so he was and he was super green and they would have had a, the problem was they would have had to have really built him and really trained him. And that was the problem. But WCW, because they had the power plant. With that maniac, that lunatic, what's his name? Uh, Sarge was the guy's uh, name. Oh, yeah, uh, Dwayne Bruce, that really short guy who used to run yeah. everybody into the ground. Yeah, um, but he couldn't break Goldberg because Goldberg went through the NFL. He survived the NFL, he could survive anything. Yeah, exactly. So you, you, yeah. you, you survive those combines and, and everything mm-hmm. and those workouts and stuff, you're golden. Yeah, yeah. So, 
he didn't even last that long. I don't even think he was there like a few months. In the no, no. Plan. Well, they they, they knew they, they they knew that this guy we we got something here. We could push him. I guess it was Sullivan, well, right? Sullivan was yeah. There. Yeah. Well, they they knew they didn't have a technical wrestler on their hands. No, but they no. Knew they had they had something to where he could be a dominant force to be reckoned with. Right, and they had to push him super quick because he was already up there. He was already, I think, he was about thirty. I think when he came in thirty one. Yeah, he, he, he was. He was. He was. He was a seasoned rookie. Right, right, right. So they had to like push him. Mm -hmm. So and with them having those one to two minute matches, the mm -hmm. fan popularity was really rising with him. They they and I and I used to actually was I was intrigued by him. And I used to actually watch the matches that he had, even though they were against putzes, pretty much. I mean, he yeah. didn't really get tested in the beginning, but no. that wasn't the way it was supposed to come off. I just remember he was very explosive. Mm -hmm. Like, he was very explosive, very powerful. And even though it was short, it left an impression. Yeah. Not to compare him, because, I mean, I don't want to insult the Ultimate Warrior, because Ultimate Warrior is by far a bigger legend than Goldberg, I think. Absolutely. But there's a similarity between Goldberg and um and Warrior there. As far as they want the paycheck and not really wanting to learn the entire business, just yeah, enough for them just, to be the the very best they could be and get the paycheck. And just a powerhouse, you know, guy where it's it's about a look, yeah, and about a certain the, energy. The only difference between the two of them is even though they had the same mentality in that, I think Warrior was far more popular than Goldberg. No, 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 it's not even close. I don't, I don't really, I'm not putting them in the same class because. As a character, Warrior had an actual character, mm -hmm. and he can actually talk on the mic. Yeah, where Goldberg was, he was kind of a little bland. Like, yeah, he had one catchphrase that you would pretty much use. Yeah, and he and he goes, "So you want to know who's next? You're next." Yeah. next I'd rather him not speak. I, I'd rather him not speak. To be honest with you, just he go did, out there, he and just destroy to. people. Yeah, no, no, yeah. just destroy people. I, I like Goldberg. I was a Goldberg fan. Oh, I'm, I I'm not. I'm not. Not. Not dissing him or anything like that. He was one of the WCW guys that i actually liked and yeah I, if, I, if he would if he would have went to wwe at that time i don't think it would he would have been as no it wouldn't no, have no, gone no. the same way no, by no, any no, means no, not in the attitude era with, with no. it wouldn't have worked so he was in the right place at the right time exactly you brought up regal um you know regal actually made him look bad in one of those matches that he had with him he did but they told him to go out and have a wrestling match with him, not yeah. a brawl to where make sure he doesn't get his two moves in on you right away. Right. We need to know, because at that point now they needed to know, can this guy actually put wrestling holds on somebody? So yeah, the match, the match stunk up the stunk up Monday Nitro. Yeah, and they said but that. he was but he was instructed to do that. I don't know. I don't know. You hear so many different versions of that story. Well, Bischoff and Regal had said the same thing on this. Real they interviewed mm -hmm. Regal and then Bischoff had said it during the Monday Night War things that he he told Regal to go out there and have a wrestling match with oh. him because they wanted to see. And Goldberg just couldn't keep up, I guess. No, he couldn't they do didn't it. know what he was doing. Okay. Uh -uh. All right. He wasn't as bad as McMichael when they asked uh, for people to do it with him because he would just botch every, literally every move. But yeah. um, anytime uh, Regal tried to do a takedown, a drop toe hold, anything like that, Goldberg just couldn't kind of yeah, cut wasn't. it. Because, but that wasn't his type of match. Mm. He's, he's, not a, he's not Bret Hart. He's not a technical wrestler. Right, he's right. a brawler. So it didn't work. So his uh, his actual first pay per view, and I love bringing up this pay per view because it always comes up. Starcade nineteen ninety seven. Oh Jesus! Exactly. <laughs> his first pay per view. He he defeated, and we just I just mentioned his name. He defeated Steve Mongo McMichael, yeah. and I know that match was was garbage because not only did McMichael screw up any type of reversal or whatnot, but if, if McMichael even tried to move, Goldberg didn't even know what to do with it. So, but in any event, Goldberg got the victory. Uh, from there now, going into 1998, still with the undefeated persona, they weren't counting his matches just yet. Okay. They were just, you know, he was just still going in and out and facing all these, how Bobby Heaton used to say in the back in the day, the Hammeneggers. At Super Brawl 8, he had defeated Perry Saturn. Oh, I'm sorry, Brad Armstrong. He beat Brad Armstrong at Super The legendary, Bowl. the legendary Brad Armstrong, the immortal Larry. That road, that was Road Dog's brother, right? I think so. Yeah, he's one of the Armstrong boys, yeah, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. They were they were good in their own mind, but they're huge successes, Road Dog. And then at Spring Stampede, he had gone on to face Perry Saturn, and he beat him there. Another legend. Uh huh. 
Now, by mid-March in 1998 is when they started counting the streak. And I always thought, I'll get to it in a minute, what uh, Jimmy Hart actually thought of it. I always thought this was ridiculous because they'd come out on Monday Nitro one week and say he's 45-0, and 0, and then the next week you're coming out on Nitro and he's 56-0. and 0. It's like, where did he fight 12 people in one week? The, the, the thing was, I don't know when it happens, but at some point the streak was actually legitimate. Yeah. And then they just kept just adding a bunch of ridiculous numbers that gave five numbers yeah yeah at first they were actually counting like okay house shows plus nitros but then at some point they just said ah nobody's actually really keeping tabs on this so let's just give them an extra 10 wins out of from week you'd be amazed how many signs how many Mm -hmm. people were were following this yeah 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 that when it finally ended a lot of people were pissed yeah it got and the way it ended too got a little out of control yeah Yeah, well look who was booking matches So um, his actual win at this point, when they started counting it, he had fought Saturn again. That uh, that victory with Saturn was actually his 74th victory. Now, with, did he fight 74 times between mid-97 and 98? Who knows? I mean, it's possible. They did have a lot of people on their roster because they had the 60-man battle royals a lot. So they kept a lot of people on callback lists and stuff. So it is possible that, he fought these people on Saturday night and yeah, maybe, I mean, but it is some, possible, but like I said, at some point I know that they, 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 Oh yeah. They blew it up. That went out the window. Mm-hmm. So actually uh, the next night after spring stampede, he challenged Raven who had just won the United States title. He challenged him for the championship. And despite all the, the uh, interference from the flock, uh, what was it? You had Reese, you had Kidman, you had Stevie Richards, uh, Sick Boy. Uh, I mean, okay. Despite all of that, Goldberg beat Raven to become the United States champion, which I thought was cool. I remember watching that match. The, the, yeah, one, of the, one of the few times I didn't flip from Raw to Nitro constantly. It was that. I know. remember it was that match and, of course, the infamous Hulk Hogan match. I didn't care who was fighting on Raw. You know, I was watching. Yeah, I remember, I remember when he. I actually remember when he got the U.S. title. Mm-hmm. I do remember that. But again, something like that should have been built for a pay per view, and it wasn't. But Bischoff was all hungry on the ratings. So, in any event, now Goldberg has become the one-time United States champion. Um, two days later, he made his first title defense on when this is when they had brought in the show Thunder. And he defended it against a hard fort uh, counterpart, Mike Enos. Everybody's like, who? Yeah. Exactly. Mm-hmm. The guy that Scott Hall interviewed, ruined his match when the NWO first got launched. Oh, like that. there you go. Well, one of the Beverly brothers. There you go. So, in any event, uh, he continued his title defenses at the Great American Bash. He fought Conan which I remember was actually a pretty decent match. Conan was actually able to go toe-to-toe with him. You know what's funny with Conan? He actually asked Conan, because when Goldberg was first training, he still had hair. Yeah. And he was thinking about shaving it. And then he asked Conan, hey, because Conan, was, his head was shaved. So he didn't want to think, he didn't want Conan to think he was like kind of taking his gimmick. So he asked Conan, hey, is it all right if I, mind if I shave my head? And Conan was like, I don't care. Yeah, do whatever you want to do. No. I mean, he's worried about Conan uh, taking Conan's gimmick. Everybody's walking around going, "Are you the next Austin?" Yeah. Unfortunately, well, he was knowing the. I mean, he was knowing the business, and he just, I guess, he figured, "Let me out of professional courtesy or something." I don't know. That's a first from what I've heard from him because I mean, he really wasn't one of the guys that really wanted to try to get along. I mean, I mean, at least that was in WWE, but a lot had gone on backstage at WWE. Mm-hmm. So at least at WCW, I mean, he had some guys that had his back. You know, again, Sting and Lex Luger. Hogan had his back. I don't know about Hogan. Well, Hogan was one of the – I didn't mention him in the beginning, but Hogan was another one of the guys that was uh, with Sting and Luger trying to get him into the business. Because you remember, Hogan also brought in Paul White, so they had seen Goldberg yeah, but, time at the time. Uh, yeah, I know. The thing was, if Hogan brings you in, it's just to work with you so he can make money. So I guess he's helping you, but at the same time, he's really helping himself. Well, he lost to Goldberg, so yeah. – it was one of the one of the best nitro matches they yeah. ever had. So I, I I know we like to bash Hulk Hogan, but every so often we have to just throw no, the yeah, ball I mean, in there. I'm just saying. I mean, what are we gonna do when we do the Hulk Hogan episode? I mean, oh, Lord. No, but up. Hogan 
Yeah, I know. You're 45 saying. minutes of verbal bashing? <laughs> no, no. That's not at least not in the early stuff. Not in the early. Yeah, stuff. yeah, he beat Iron Sheik and then after that. Yeah, yeah. So. <laughs> so, from there after Conan, it was uh Bash of the Beach, he fought Kurt Henning, which um that was a I didn't yeah. like that match. You know, by now at this point, now they had started the Who's Next. Uh, catchphrase with the shirts and I remember I, I couldn't get my hands on one of those shirts I really had tried and I, I mean I just, I loved that you know when they when they say who's next and he would yell it out it, it, it really worked for him um, and now by this time at this uh, late juncture of 1998 he's starting to be, uh, become a main eventer and you would think after he's undefeated how much longer you honestly are going to wait to make him a main eventer but, you know, I know you got Hogan, you got Sting, you got all these other guys. But, I mean, here's this fresh up-and-comer. They needed to get him in that spot. So um, this is right around the time, and, and we've spoken about this numerous times. On Thunder, you remember they announced that three days from now in the Georgia Dome, he mm-hmm. was going to be challenging Hulk Hogan for the WCW Championship. Right. Mm-hmm. Imagine, and they've and they've said this, and you and I have said this. Imagine if they waited for a pay per view, they could have fit a hundred thousand people in the Georgia Dome. The buy rate on the pay per view alone, they would have made millions and millions of dollars on this. This would have been a WrestleMania type atmosphere. They they gave it away for free. And they could have, I mean, they could have built it up. Yeah, they gave so you seventy two hours notice. No storylines. Right. No. I mean, no run-ins, no verbal conflicts, nothing. They could have. It could have also helped them with the ratings because they could have done a few nitros where they're building this thing. Exactly. You know, but instead they decide to just throw that thing together and just so they could win the the the, the rating that night because at that point they're losing the. Yeah, it was flip ninety eight. It was flip flopping mm-hmm. in ninety eight. Yeah. Yeah, they they were starting to lose a they little were starting traction. To lose steam. Yeah. And Bischoff was all about those ratings, but I honestly think if Bischoff would have just focused on his own stuff and not worried about the ratings i think they would have been fine well you know what wait you know i don't think they actually lost the ratings yet I, it, they, they had think. lost it in april the streak had ended the streak ended in april right and then and then, and then another few weeks had gone when nitro won them okay, and okay. then by the summer around this time it was kind of win a week lose a week okay okay, okay. all right but yeah the austin mcmahon main event is what broke it okay, okay. in april but yeah okay. this was at the time where it was two years eight, right weeks was over. Yeah, yeah it was two it was two years okay i couldn't believe that that was heart-wrenching man yeah. just some of those monday night roars were just really god awful and just you look over at Nitro, and it's like, how are you going to compete with this? But then we we see how they didn't push anybody. Goldberg getting a push actually shocked me, considering everybody on that, everybody there was the same old, same old. And they finally gave it to this guy, yeah, which which impressed me. But again, you gave three days notice on a Monday champion. Nitro, 40,000 champion, ver- champion versus champion. Yeah. And of course, the typical NWO stipulation is he had to fight Scott Hall. Yeah, he had to get through Scott Hall. And then, if you know, if you watch that match closely, you can see Scott Hall telling him, like, you're blowing it, man. You're blowing it. He's because he's like screwing up, I guess, certain spots. Oh, during their match? During their match, yeah. You can see Scott Hall. Hmm. Yep. That's the pot calling the kettle black. Yep. So. I don't see what I don't see what he was blowing. I mean, the match looked. De- I mean, I, I watched the Hogan Goldberg match more than I've watched the Hall. Right, 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 right. But I just love how you got to beat him to get to me, brother. And Bobby Heenan, man, I never hear heard him cheer so much that night. He was like, "All right, he speared him. That's part one. Now you need to get him up." And I remember what you know. It's like I remember watching this, and I remember thinking like. I I knew Goldberg could beat him, but then I'm like, they're not gonna do the title change on. On Nitro, because Nitro is always a, a bad, like, mess of an ending. Yeah, I was still waiting for Sting to come out of the rafters. Yeah, like 50, yeah, yeah. 50 I was guys come out. out and... It's Sting. It's Sting. And maybe, and, I, and then I'm thinking, maybe, just maybe that okay, they have this match, but it leads to a pay per view rematch. Right, right, right. That's what I was thinking. And then, but he wins the, the wins the title. And I'm like, wow. And now, you know, back then, you don't, you know, you're not looking at it uh, from the business aspect that they just blew it. You look at it now and go. Man, you guys just gave away a fortune. Yeah. I mean, that's just what is wrong with you. Yeah. But I mean, it's, a, it's a cool moment. It's a great moment. But just yeah, it is. 
I mean, as I, a fan, I mean, as a fan, I wasn't really thinking anything like none oh, of us these, were. All these guys then. are stupid. I was just caught up in the moment. Dude, we, we're, we're all uh, suffer from that carpal tunnel from back in the day with the constant remote switching yeah, back and yeah, forth. Yeah. I mean, going to bed late, going getting up for school the next day exhausted because we were watching countless hours of mm-hmm. Raw and Nitro. I mean, it was just classic back then. To be a wrestling fan in that era was just unbelievable. Mm-hmm. No, for sure. I just wish we could get a fraction of that back. No, it's over. It's never over till it's over. Yeah. Don't believe that, man. Anyway, so now he's the WCW champion. Obviously, he had to vacate the U.S. title, which they're known for. Typical WCW fashion, vacated belt. Well, hey, in this in this case, it was it was justifiable. No, this know. is fine, but the old the the hundred other times they did it, you know. Oh my, hundred that that was just nineteen ninety seven. Yeah, I mean, good lord, man! If it got if it, if it rained, they vacated a belt. It was ridiculous. Yep. So at, at uh, following this now at Road Wild, if you remember, he won a battle royal which was pretty much him versus the NWO. Mm-hmm. It had uh, the Giant, Scott Hall, Kurt Henning, Scott Norton, Conan, Lex Luger, Sting, and Kevin Nash. This is a pretty decent battle role. And, of course, he's going to keep the momentum going because he's undefeated, so he won it. Yeah, I've noticed on, on, in his title run, if he, if he defended the WCW title, it was against crap, like Kurt Henning. I remember he defended at one, at one pay-per-view. He... They didn't really no, know. Nitro. How to... I mean, on Nitro, I think he fought Big Show a couple times with the, with the Giant. He does. Oh fight. yeah, that that no, was but that, that was that, on Nitro, right? That was Nitro. Yeah, the the famous jackhammer on on, yeah, on that the was, Giant. That oh was my crazy. god! That was. I, I didn't think he could get him up. I didn't really I, didn't think he could get him up. I remember my mother yelling at me because I'm over here cheering in my room, like I can't believe you got this son. Of yeah, and up. she's over here yelling. I'm trying to go to sleep for work. I'm, well, again, back then in New York, what is it? It ended around eleven o'clock. Already. Around eleven, yeah, yeah. yeah 11. So, well, for Nitro, it was kind of like eleven o five. Yeah, yeah. Already. They would, they would always go over. They'd always go over. When you saw Sting come out of the rafters, you know. That's when you know, yeah. <laughs> but the night, yeah, the night he got the uh, uh, giant up in the in the jackhammer was just unbelievable. Yeah. And Giant really, if you notice, he didn't really ju- jump into it as much as most guys do. So the power that Goldberg possesses, and then he held him there for he held a him. little he bit. He held him a little bit, too. And then I think he does it twice, because I think he fights him twice on Nitro, mm-hmm. I'm pretty sure. Yeah. yeah. So from there now, the next his next feud at this point now is Diamond Dallas Page. So now we're leading to one of the nails in the coffin. If everybody don't know that, what I'm talking about, I'll get to that in a second. He, um, DDP actually won the, uh, was it the war, the war games, um, steel cage match the month prior to get the title Fall shot, Brawl, right? to get the title shot. Yeah. yeah. That was the one where warrior was involved in warrior, Bret Hart. It had, it had the who's who, but you had the one guy that didn't belong. And that was Stevie Ray. Yeah, so you knew he was the one that was going to get the pin. Sure enough, page pinned him mainly because Hogan ran off when Warrior showed up. And uh, so now Page is the number one contender, so he goes to Halloween Havoc to face Goldberg in what was to be an awesome match. Unfortunately, if you watched it live, you didn't get to see it. No, well, most people didn't. I know I didn't. I like missed I said, out. I, I, I had to get the refund. Like I said, I can't. I went to a friend's house. I can't even remember if I saw it or not. I don't remember. My, mine blacked out because I, I had uh, cable vision. At that time, and I, don't I was watching it, and I'm like, I'm looking at the time, and I'm like, how are they going to get this match in? Let and sure back. enough, as soon as they locked up, the, the feed went off, and I remember I called up the next day. I got the refund mm-hmm. for it because then, you know, they they actually heard from a few people about that. They had to yeah. give away millions of dollars. Oh yeah, that. yeah. Then they so then the next night they aired it on Nitro. Mm-hmm. Um, but it was a great match, though. That was actually a really good match. It was, and Paige came close to beating yep, him. Yep. You know, I, I remember he got the diamond cutter on him. He he reversed the spear or got out of the way. And but in in at, when it was all said and done, Goldberg kept the title. He beat yep. DDP, but it was a great match. No, it was. So and one of Goldberg's it, one of Goldberg's better matches, I'd say. Yeah, well, he actually fought a, a decent uh, in my book a, a decent competitor finally. Mm-hmm as champion because he wasn't facing his pay-per-view title match was pretty much a joke 
Yeah. And not only that, but they were mid card matches at that. He wasn't even getting the main event. This was the first time as champion that he was the main event mm-hmm. of a pay per view. And I'm really sp- surprised that Hogan and Warrior, which was the undercard to that match, they didn't make that the main event because that I wouldn't put it past Hogan and Bischoff to say, "Hey, I want this as the top match." But you know, they so they they surprised us. So. At this point, now, once he defeated Paige, he was at 173-0 and 0 and 174 days as champion. So now the next step for him at this point was Kevin Nash at Starcade. Now, Kevin Nash was booking the matches at this point, so... Well, I, I mean, we don't, really, we don't really know. Well, he said he, he was. No, he denies it. He says that he didn't take over the booking gig until um, sometime in 99. But I think that he was part of the creative team. I don't. I think he wasn't officially the, the booker, but I think he was because nobody knows who made that decision. Whenever you hear all these guys talk about it, like nobody wants to take credit for. Because it, it, well, if it worked out, they'll take the credit for it. But if it was a complete flop, yeah. they don't want to be. They don't. They don't want their name associated. Goldberg. With it. Goldberg swears Kevin Nash was the booker. Goldberg yes. swears up and down. And he said that the minute he got the booking thing, he put himself as the number one contender. Yeah, well, I mean, I mean to, to defend Nash, though, and Nash's, def, you know, Nash's defense, he was over. Like, oh, yes. Really over. The Wolfpack and Kevin Nash were really over. I mean, uh, what other babyface was as over as Kevin Nash? Nobody other than Nobody. Goldberg. Go, that was besides, Goldberg. Besides Paige, Goldberg. but Paige had already been done. Right, right. But but even still, he wasn't he wasn't quite where Nash was, you know. And and supposedly at that point, they were they were – they were booing Goldberg at times, the fans. Supposedly that was going on. It's places like uh Detroit, especially. Yeah, well, yeah. Because that's where but Nash he's is from built Detroit. from. Yeah. Nash is from Detroit. But and they were also pumping in through the uh the sound system, fake Goldberg chants. Oh yeah, you could always tell that I mean the some of the fans would cheer it, but I mean, as loud as it was, sometimes it it was starting to fade because the fans there's only so long you could run with something before they're going to get tired of it. And the undefeated streak was now looming towards a, uh, over a year, about a year and a half. He's still the champion. And they're like, okay, is this going to end at yeah. some point? Now, do I agree with Nash being the number one contender? Absolutely. Do I agree with the way it ended? Absolutely not. I mean, this was not the way to do it, but Goldberg pulled it. Uh, he, he just, he, he played it off as, it, um, am I going to say that was the right way to do it? No. Am I going to? Am, am I the guy that makes that decision? Absolutely not. He played it off, but I know he had to be a little deep down, a little pissed off about how it ended. Yeah, I mean, you got to be with Scott Hall with the taser. I mean, it was just that's just. That's stupid. I mean, I mean, and by this point, WCW is just creating a series of event, of stupid events because what was it? A week later, after this, we talked about in the NWO thing was the finger poke of doom. This just led to Nash giving the title back to Hogan. Right, he was supposed to have a rematch with um, with Goldberg. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he got. Uh, I mean, he got his revenge at sold out against Scott Hall for, for the whole Taser thing. Uh, it was a um, it was a Taser ladder match, which it wasn't a good match. I mean, by this point, Scott Hall's really fighting his demons, and not. Um, you know he's not all there. Now, now that the streak is over, this is some some guys actually came forward as far as Chris Jericho was one of them. He would say that one week he's forty two and zero, like we just discussed this, and then the next week he'd be fifty eight and zero. Even Jimmy Hart had come out and said that he thought that the embellishment was funny, as far as the streak goes. He said when the fans realized the record had been was being falsified, they began withdrawing their homemade signs about Goldberg's record. Mm -hmm. And I mean, it doesn't take a genius to realize that, okay, you have, you have Monday Nitro and you've got Thunder and you've got WCW Saturday night. You've got maybe three dates that you do the house shows. So that's five, six date, six matches tops. And you're telling me he's won 12 matches in a week. Everybody's going to figure it out, especially this is the internet era now. So it's not, you can't hide it. So, with all that being around, now at Spring Stampede that year, he fought Kevin Nash in the rematch, and he beat him. 
So now he's gotten that back under his belt. He's beaten them both. Yeah, but who's at, at that time at that point? Who's the champion? Hogan, right? Yeah. Or who's somebody? Not Nash. It ain't Goldberg. So he never got. Yeah. So he never got the. the he never. He never got his title. He never got Goldberg. Never got his rematch for the title. Him. And the, going back to Jericho for a second, like they kind of ruined that because uh, that that little feud that he had with Jericho was actually pretty funny. I actually I liked, liked the way Jericho set that up. Yeah, Jericho said he was undefeated against him, like. Because he would yes. he, he would say he was gonna fight him, but he knew Goldberg wasn't there, and then he would just like he won by count out, or he wouldn't go to he wouldn't find he wouldn't be able to find the arena. And it, and it's funny yeah. how he set this up because he all he asked Bischoff for some some uh, mic time, and Bischoff didn't really know what these guys were doing from from one day to the next. And you go, yeah, okay, just make it quick. Mm-hmm. This went on for a few months before Bischoff actually realized what he was doing. And this was in, this was genius on Jericho's part because he's building. He's like, if you yeah. guys are not going to make me a main eventer, I'm going to build myself up, and I'm going to do it at the expense of of the champion. And he had his own security. He had his own bodyguard, Ralphus, Ralphus, and who, who he brought to WWE, which was funny for a but stint. Apparently, Goldberg didn't want to do business with him. I don't know if somebody got got in Goldberg's ear and told him that oh, Jericho's too small. This looks ridiculous. He just, I guess, he just wanted to squash. Jericho. I think that was Goldberg himself because he, I don't know. Yeah. he had he had this thing with if I'm a heavyweight I'm going to work with the heavyweights. He said him versus Jericho wasn't realistic, and he's like, "There's no way somebody would believe that a guy like that could beat a guy like me." And that came off the the Monday Night Raw uh, yeah. Monday Night War um, documentary. They said Goldberg also got very difficult after he started making a lot of money. And he got that major push went that he started. Head. Yeah, it kind of went to his head, supposedly. Unfortunately. Yeah. But in any event, I like how Jericho got that done. And the, he finally got uh, got his match against him. But it was on a Nitro. And they squashed nitro. it pretty quick. Yeah, they squashed yeah, yeah, it pretty yeah, yeah. quick. And once Bischoff knew what was going on, he he, he nixed it instantly. And this was yeah. the you know, the clear sign to Jericho, like, I got to get out of here. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But, I man, I tipped my hat to Chris Jericho, man. That was brilliant on his part. No, it was. It was good. Again, at the risk of repeating myself, if you're not going to bump my career up, I'm going to do this for myself. So now we, we move on to Slamboree. He, um, unfortunately, he was in a storyline, but at this point now he was injured. Um, that's, when he hurt, that's when he injures himself? Not the limo incident. No, uh, this was a, um, it was a storyline injury. He, he wasn't hurt. Um, this was so that he can now become a movie star. Because he, oh, remember, he did the Universal Soldier, The Return, with Jean-Claude Van Damme. So they did the storyline where the Steiner brothers attacked him and injured him and took him off of television for a while. No, this isn't when he accidentally almost lost his arm. That's later on? That's later on. That's okay. about a year from now or, or towards the end of the year when yeah. uh, with the limo, which was yeah. very, very stupid on his part. Yeah, so, you know what's funny? These guys can't even get their story straight. When we get up to the – when he hurts, injures himself – I'll mm-hmm. get into that. How these guys can't get kept, people like Kevin Nash can't get their story straight. No, you you see, gotta, yeah. you're lying. Yeah, so, <laughs> you mean they can't get their shit yeah, together? No, no, huh? no, the timelines and stories they can't get straight. But oh, it was a while. See, so, yeah, I don't think he was gone that long, right? He wasn't gone that long. Nah, two months. Okay, he was gone two months. I mean, he didn't have a big role in the movie. I mean, for anybody that didn't want, I didn't watch it. I, I, mean, I, th- I actually I saw think that I in the theater. The I think I spent more time watching him in Looney Tunes back in action than I did yeah. Universal Soldier. I mean, it was just not. I mean, I saw the first one, but when it got to the second one, I was just like, so in any event, uh, he returned two months later and he actually defeated Rick Steiner at Road Wild. So he got his revenge there. Um, he, he had after that, he had started a feud once again with DDP, but this time Paige was turned heel. And he had his group with him, the Jersey Triad. Oh, yeah. yeah. Bam Bam Bigelow and Canyon, which wasn't yeah. bad. Well, yeah. They won the tag titles and they had the free bird rule. It wasn't bad to get Paige to be a heel. And it kind of gave Canyon something to do. Mm-hmm. It's, a lot of people not Canyon, but the guy had really had wrestling capabilities. Oh, he was good. I, like, I always like Canyon. Just nobody gave him a chance. And I don't know why. I was mainly, I was, besides you probably, I was one of the rare Canyon fans. I mean the whole who better yeah, he than was like, Canyon thing. Who better was than right. who better than Canyon? I mean, he was all right. But. He was. I mean, he was like the atom bomb of uh, of WCW. Yeah, to go there. <laughs> we'll, 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 work, we'll work charisma, but yeah. I still can't find that shirt. No, I like. I like. I did like Canyon though. I did like him. 
hey, don't knock on Zana Bomb. He was tag team with them. Yeah, that's when true. they were Rat and Mortis for two seconds, and then they got rid of them. Yeah, well, that's how that's the thing with the gimmicks there. They always yeah, change. Yeah. But Canyon to me always had that natural talent. Yeah, no, I, no he was... I was glad that DDP wanted to work with him and Bigelow with, mm-hmm. with him, and it gave him something to do, and it showed off what the guy can do. Mm-hmm. So, but unfortunately, even when he got to WWE, it just nothing clicked for him. And I know there's a Dark Side of the Ring episode coming up on him later on this year. I think that's actually the season finale. And I'm actually looking forward to seeing this because yeah, I yeah. know he had a very, very Me hard, too. sad yeah, life. Yeah. Rest in peace. Yes, exactly. So now, uh, once he started with Paige and the Jersey Triad, it did. the feud didn't last long. It actually ended at, at Fall Brawl with Goldberg getting the win. If you notice now, Goldberg's really not losing any again. But unfortunately, he's not getting a push either. It's just kind of like at this point, he's stale. His momentum is already gone by now. Like, yeah. Well, the fans not gone, gone, but it's not. You know, it's lost its luster. Yeah. Which happens with all of them because you either have to evolve your character, or you're just gonna fall dead in the water. And not only that, the business was in the toilet by then. In by this point of 1999, yes, yeah, it it's ready. it's the the ratings were like 6.0 to 2.5 at this mm-hmm. point in WWE's favor. So from here now, he his next feud from here went with uh, Sid Vicious after he feuded with Paige, and he actually uh, it was a challenge. To, and Sid actually had a they they started doing a storyline where he had a winning streak going. And it was a challenge to, to end Sid's uh, winning streak, which he did. At Halloween Havoc, he fought for Sid's United States Championship. And for now, Goldberg became the, the two-time U.S. champion. So at least they put a, the mid-card title back on him. Well, that was but, awesome. Yeah, I know. By this point, I, I still think he should have been in a pay-per-view match for the yeah. WCW title, but whatever. Um, he also had won the... He also won the WCW title against Sting, but the next night on Nitro, if you remember this one, J.J. Dillon said the match was not sanctioned, and I, I don't remember uh, which pay per view it was. It wasn't Mayhem. It was the one. Uh, I, I think it was Havoc. I think it was a Halloween Havoc that that happened. Ninety nine. They said it was a sanction. Yeah. So um, Sting was also not given the title back due to him attacking the ref during the match. So uh, when this happened, so um, with with the match not being sanctioned against Sting for the WCW title and Sting actually turning heel at this point and attacked the ref, what did they do? They took the title off of him. They vacated it. What a a surprise. And they actually started a 32-man tournament for the title, which would commence including and include Goldberg. It's funny because that same night, Goldberg faced Bret Hart in round one. And I, I, I thought that was weird that they started with these two guys. But this tournament was really just, like, ridiculous. Well, it was Russo. Russo was involved in this. Yeah, by this point, yeah. It was what Russo. do you expect? So, And it's funny because the round one match also had the U.S. title um, up for grabs as well. So not only that's are you fighting right. a round one match, but you're putting your U.S. title on the right, line. Right, yeah. And um, it was funny because Sid Vicious interfered, not only giving Goldberg his second loss, but he also lost uh, the U.S. title. And it turned out that Brett won the tournament. So that's where Bret Hart became the, the champion because I believe uh, at Mayhem is when it came down to him and, and Benoit. Mm-hmm. And that, we've talked about, was one of their best pay-per-views ever. Yeah, definitely. That match between him and Benoit was an instant classic. Mm-hmm. And I don't like to praise Benoit a whole lot these days, but I'll give credit where credit's due. These mm-hmm. two guys had a hell of a match that night. So now Goldberg is has got his second loss, which was ridiculous. So when does he get hurt? When does he mess up his hand? 2000. Oh, it's in 2000 against his hand? I don't know. Yeah. For some reason, I thought it was in 99. So now... Um, At Mayhem, Goldberg faced Sid Vicious in the I Quit match, which he won, which it's hard to believe either one of those guys would say I quit. But again, Mayhem was a great pay-per-view from from top to bottom. Every match was decent, including a Jeff Jarrett match in there, too. Oh, Jesus. Yes, it was actually one of his good ones, because it wasn't for the WCW title. I think it was for the the U.S. title. 
So in any event, Goldberg now teamed with Bret Hart to defeat Creative Control, and they won the tag team titles. They won the tag titles, yeah, that's right. That sounds like something that WWE would do. Yeah, pretty much. You, know? you guys together. Hey, you guys want to be the tag champions for a couple of weeks? Oh, yeah, sure. Oh, you guys are feuding? Oh, well, let me put the tag yeah. belts on you, too. Austin and Sean and Austin and Dude Love, pretty much Austin and anybody. Shawn Michaels and Cena. In any event, one week later, they lost the tag titles to, uh, you guessed it, the Outsiders. Would it be any other tag team? Mm. So, in any event now, moving on, now we're, we're on to Starcade. And we've co- we covered this in Bret Hart's episode, so I won't go into too much detail with the whole thing. Goldberg challenged Bret Hart for the WCW Championship. Bret's famous words, don't hurt. He didn't, he didn't follow that. And, I mean, again, I don't want to go too much into detail because we covered it quite extensively. Well, for the, I mean, for those who don't, don't know, he hit him with a mule. Uh, Goldberg hit Bret Hart with a mule kick, hit him in the side, right on his ear, and concussed him pretty bad, which ultimately ends up ending Bret Hart's career. Yeah, seriously. And not only that, that was only the one of several concussions that night because yeah. he got another one on the outside because you remember when he did the figure four on the ring post, he hits his head. He his head on the on – the, I mean, this this this, this is a, a great match that just was a, a screw-up from, from beginning to end, unfortunately. And it, I don't know if it's Goldberg. If he, I don't know if he accidentally did it, if he meant to do it. If it no, was just it, was by, it was by accident. He just, you know, he just was a little reckless and probably wasn't really trained. Um, that's what everybody says, that even Brett said that. that well, to this day, heard, Brett, never... Brett says he's the worst in-ring uh, wrestler to work with yeah. because of that whole thing. But I can understand his frustration because of what happened. Yeah, but Brett said that. Goldberg, um, they didn't they pushed him too quick and they didn't really train him, so it's not like he did it on purpose, you know. At least I hope not, but anyway. Um, so yeah, if anybody hasn't uh doesn't also know the, the story about the then we go into great detail in the second part of our Bret Hart episode. Check that out. Um after the whole thing, Bret Hart had vacated the title the next night, saying he wanted to win. Uh how did he put it? He wanted to uh he didn't want to win that way, mm-hmm. but there was the, 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 you know, the whole, the whole thing, but whatever. Um, this, the, this next, uh, this, this next stupid thing that Goldberg did is what really this right here. It, I'm just going to talk, start talking about it. Cause I mean, on December 23rd, 1999, he injured himself smashing the windshield of the NWO limo. Instead of using the pipe that he was, given he used his forearm through the the third the third window he's the glass sliced an artery and he keeps hitting it the thing is he keeps hitting it and you see you see the all the blood yeah, that's coming yeah. out of it and he was um he nearly had his uh, forearm amputated as a result of this due to the damage he missed four months from this yeah apparently i'm trying to remember the story i think he was upset about something he was angry about something and that's why he, he was punching the uh, punching the glass and he hurt himself by accident because he was upset about something. Like legit, I think he was legitimately upset about something. Well, by this point, I would say it's the direction his career is going into. Yeah, but probably. I don't think it was that. I think it was something else. And then he so so the what I was saying earlier about how Kevin Nash can't get his story straight. They said that the reason why the finger poke of doom happens mm-hmm. is so Goldberg has a heel faction to feud with. So they had to get the NWO back together and screw Goldberg out, of, Goldberg out of the title. So that way they're chasing, he's chasing after the belt and he's fighting all of those heels. He needed heels to work against. And he says, and then Nash said, and then, you know, stupid Goldberg put his hand through the, through the glass and that, that, that ruined everything. Okay. But, but it was, he didn't, Goldberg didn't get injured till a year later. Yeah, I was I was just about to say yeah. um, his timeline is kind of right. off here. So that doesn't even make any sense. Kevin Nash is saying, "Oh yeah, it was Goldberg's fault that, that it didn't work," but that was a year later. Now, see, all along from the time that Goldberg won the, the WCW title, he had a heel faction to feud with. He had the NWO, yeah, the Black and White. Unfortunately, it it he yeah he fought the lower card of the of the NWO and not the top guys. And it, 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 this is where they had to go elsewhere for a feud with him. 
I never it, bought that. It, just... it, 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 made, it made great sense. Okay, I could see where I would believe it as far as how he said it. They put them back together so they had something to feud with. Okay, they could put them back together, but the whole finger poker doom changing title cha- champions, that's not for Goldberg's benefit. So let let you know. Let's not you know cover that up. Oh and not listen. listen not, I don't want to get too sidetracked here, but do you believe well, WCW, that WCW we can? Oh, but do you believe that WWE has the nerve to release the finger poke of Doom title and they call it the NW? Uh, they call it the Wolfpack title. Did you see they released it on their website? It's the WCW belt with the the Wolfpack the in, in red NWO written. Yeah, I seen the NWO. Yeah, I see. I seen and, that. In red, and they call it the Wolfpack title. And then, like, I've commented, and a bunch of people like it. And I, I comment the the pink finger poke, finger poke of Doom edition. Yeah, because that's when it happened. They spray painted it red after the finger poke of Doom. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and they put a belt. They have the balls to put that belt out there. Anything to make a money, uh, yeah, money. I'm not. Bad. I mean, for the people that are the Wolfpack fans, and I and I was one of them. So was I, but I'm not I getting mean, that. That that would be a definite. Uh, uh, collector collectible item for somebody that's a Wolfpack fan. But I know I you think and of, I are not going to get it because of what that belt. Represents. All I think about is the finger poke of doom when I see exactly. That. Yeah. So Un- unfortunately, that's tar- that belt is tarnished for yeah. us because yeah. of that event. Yeah. So I get it. But I mean, the the red on there, I purposely purposely, uh, you know, mm. to me, I like the 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 the, the black spray paint on it. Yeah, no, that's better. that's the classic NWO. I'd like the red one on there, but I wouldn't buy the belt. They're too expensive anymore. If anything, to me, if I ever get one, I have the the WWE title that they have now, but to me, I want the wing belt. I want that classic. Mm -hmm. So now he's out four months. So this spring, his return didn't come until May of 2000. By this point, the Titanic's pretty much half sunk. I wasn't even watching at this point. No. I'm not even watching. I stopped... uh, when you met, because you remember right before Spring Tampede, they took they 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 shut uh, Nitro down. For, they shut WCW down for two weeks. Two weeks, I remember that they were rebranding and whatever a new look. When you do that, you're you're done. Oh yeah, I, it's just a matter of time. It's 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 done. You do not shut your company down, and then come back up a couple of weeks later. You build, you work through whatever it is you're doing. Mm-hmm. But they just, it's just like business was over for two weeks until we can get our stuff in order. And what did we decide when we get back? Everybody loses their titles. We're going to start yeah. all over again. Why? You can't just incorporate the new blood into your storylines and gradually do this like normal wrestling companies? No. I'm terrible. But this is Bischoff and now Russo together doing this. So, And they're the same ones that believe the chosen one was a guy with a guitar. So... Okay. If you believe that's your chosen person, you really don't belong running a wrestling company. I got to say it. Broke 6,000 guitars. Never drew a dime. dime. Never drew a dime. Did you think I was going to go through this episode and not knock a, uh, have a jo- that comment for Jeff Jarrett come up? Oh because God. we're going to get into the timeline where they believe he was the chosen oh, one. Oh, Jesus. Jesus. Are you kidding me? Yeah. I mean, my God. He's he's the chosen piece of crap. I'm so, I'm sorry, and not one person yet has commented for us to be a Jeff Jarrett fan. I I told you they don't exist. I still haven't. I still have not met a Jeff Jarrett fan. I don't think even Jeff Jarrett is a fan of himself. Yeah, yeah. his father might be though. His father was the only reason for his success. Yeah, pretty much. In any event, when he gets back in May now, his first feud involves. Um, he oh not well. His first feud involved. He got involved in it. It was a handicap match between Kevin Nash versus Tank Abbott and Rick Steiner. I don't know why you'd want to even get involved in that, and I don't even know why Tank Abbott was. I Tank Abbott was there. There, Ken Shamrock or Dan Severn. This was oh, you brought yeah. a, 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 yeah. a UFC fighter in. We're gonna bring a UFC fighter. In. The only problem is this UFC fighter sucks and can't wrestle. So at least Dan Severin could do a body slam. Don't fall off your chair now. <laughs> I'm just speaking this, the truth. No, no, it is what it is. It was, it was like the uh, Dan Severin the generic, and Ken Shamrock can the can generic fight. version of uh, like they had China and they yeah. brought in Asia. 
But Asia can't do squat. Tank Abbott can't do anything. He couldn't do a body slam without popping somebody's shoulder out of their socket. Did he I come mean, in with the no? Bad. Did he come with the no limit soldiers, or am I thinking about somebody else? I think it was somebody else because when Tank Abbott came in, he automatically aligned himself with Rick, oh, okay. and I don't even know why. Mm. But yeah, I remember the no limit soldiers. Yeah. That lasted what a minute. In any event, now at the Great American Bash. Uh, Jeff Jarrett, your your pal, oh, defended the WCW title against Kevin Nash and Goldberg. And it's funny because Goldberg turned on Nash, making him a heel once again, aligning himself with the New Blood. And that didn't make any sense because, if anything, Goldberg to me would be part of the other one. But again, they split WCW down the middle, Billionaires Club, New Blood, and it's just like this isn't working. Especially when they had Hogan feuding with Billy Kidman of all people. Yeah, I remember that. That was that was awful. And then Hogan wasn't even in in uh, wrestling attire at that point. He's wrestling in jeans. Mm-hmm. So it I mean it didn't last long as Goldberg was injured again and missed time. Um he um he actually defeated Nash at Bash at the Beach with the help from Scott Steiner. So this injury, he wasn't out too long. But everything that he's done now in his career is starting to catch up to him. So from there at New Blood Rising, Goldberg faced Nash and Steiner in a number one contenders match. Um, they Well, not triple threat match. I'm sorry. They call it a triangle match. Same thing. And Kevin Nash won. I can't believe, you know, I'm not surprised at that. You know, Kevin Nash is practically running WCW. Of course, he's going to be the number one contender. So... Uh, Goldberg actually walked out of the match cursing at Vince Russo, and now he's turning uh, uh, babyface again, which by now the fans are just like, at this point, they really don't care. Yeah, they don't. They don't. Because this was also right around the time where uh, David Arquette became the champion, and Goldberg was feuding with Vince Russo. And, I mean, this is the, this is the, the high life of WCW. So the feud with Russo had intensified. Russo told him if he couldn't duplicate his streak again at this time, now he would be out. Uh, now, what have we always said? Besides, if you put new in front of every, any tag team, it's going to suck. Anything you try to duplicate from the original is not going to be as good as the first time. So obviously redoing this streak for Goldberg is not going to be as good as it was the last time. And the fact that they even wanted to do this because they're running out of ideas for storylines anyway to get the fans involved. Yes. I mean, they, they were really uh, reaching. The only storyline that made sense back then at this point was at ba- uh, Bash at the Beach with the whole Hogan, Jeff Jarrett, Vince Russo thing. And we've talked about that. that and, and, and I really thought it, it would have taken off and actually maybe helped them but it just blew up in their face. Either Russo was lying, Hogan was lying. We know Jarrett would be lying. I I think Russo was more lying than anybody as far as the whole thing with that goes. That's that's an episode in itself. So in any event, at Halloween Havoc, now he's put in a handicap match against Chronic. And I don't know about you, but I actually liked them in the brief time they were there when they put those two guys together. No, they were good. Yeah, they were good. So you were an Atom Bomb fan. Yeah. I knew it. Hey, we got an Atom Bomb fan and no Jeff Jarrett fans. How oh, cool yeah. is this? How cool is this? So, and again, at Starcade, he won uh, uh, when he was attacked by, um, he, he beat, uh, what was it, Buff Bagwell. He was attacked by Lex Luger because he had started going into 2001 now with the streak on the line. He's, he's feuding with Lex Luger and Buff Bagwell. The tag team are totally buffed. And so... When I saw this car, this match on the pay per view, you remember it was at um, Sin, where they had him teaming with the power plant guy, Bruce, uh, Dwayne Bruce, the face totally buffed. I had a feeling when I watched the when I when I saw this match advertised that it was over for Goldberg at this point because they they did lose the match. Bruce was pinned. Now Goldberg is out, uh, storyline wise. Now. The storyline allowed Goldberg to have shoulder surgery. A lot of people did not know this. Um, but WCW was born in March of 2001 during his recovery. 
uh, by WWE. He was not involved with the invasion, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. That would have been awesome. And it caused WWE to buy out his contract from AOL. He earned two and a half million dollars. It was him and Bret Hart that were the top guys that were earning back then, uh, the top contracts from AOL. And um, it was due to be three and a half million, and as it was expiring in July of 2003. So he, like everybody else, decided to stay home and collect their money. Mm -hmm. But uh, man, what what an evasion that would be if everybody just played ball and showed up. And the no, only thing, that, no, the it's only not. Thing that no, 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 no. You're not going to put that on the wrestlers. That that is all. No, 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 no. I, I'm not putting it on the wrestlers. No. I'm just saying, if in general, in, in, everybody, if if it, if it all just worked out the way it should have, imagine what that paper yeah, would have nah, been like. They're, 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 the only downside for WWE was they they didn't have Guerrero was terminated, Benoit was out injured, and Triple H was hurt. So you didn't have those three guys to be involved in it, but imagine what you could add. I'm not putting it on the wrestlers by any means. This was all on Vince. It is what it is. We got the 2.0 version of the invasion. Or the 3.0, whatever. This was the watered down, watered down version. It was really bad, I'm going to admit. The whole invasion was just a crap fest. The nonstop title changes, just the, the, the constant Austin angle matches were driving me bonkers and the, in the brief time that angle actually became the champion during that time and then lost the belt in the brief time that jericho became the wcw champion during that time made it interesting what came out of it at uh, armageddon with jericho was classic but that invade that the whole invasion angle was just to me 2001 was not a good year for them because they didn't, they had the la they had uh, the lack of main event talent uh, in WWE before WCW came in. Because remember, The Rock was out making the movies. Yeah, Triple H and Austin together. They're only feuding with Undertaker and Kane. They tried to the feud with Benoit and Jericho. Benoit got hurt. They tried with the Hardy Boys, but that never made it past Monday Night Raw. I mean, it was they for some reason it was just like they had a lack of stuff heading into 01. And if it wasn't for WCW rosters showing up anybody at this point, it would have been a continually bad year for them. Not 1995 bad, but a bad. Because yeah. it, just, it just didn't seem like they had the talent or the main event stuff there, especially when they were doing with Austin and Triple H together. Once I get into Austin's episode, I'll explain more about what happened with that two-man power trip with the injury. But in any event, uh, Goldberg's WCW career came to an end. And so now we won't see him again until April 2003. The night out was it the it was the night after WrestleMania. Mm -hmm. Yep. And we'll get into that in uh, the WCW version of Goldberg's career. I know. Uh, yeah. So, and, uh, I mean, what is, what is your? I know I'm doing all the talking here. I got motor mouth's got to hush up here. Your opinion of his WCW run? I thought it started off great. It started off tremendous. And just like everything else in WCW, it just, ultimately, yeah, yeah. Unfortunately, yeah, because he was one of one of the original. And I'm not taking anything away from Sting, Luger, uh, no, no, Blair. They're all you know the, the those original core guys. I'm talking about something that they brought up from their minors mm -hmm. that that was just theirs, not something they went out and actually and bought. That was already a name. They, this was something they grew. That became a huge success, but they just didn't know what to do with it. Yeah. But Still there's good. not so much you can do with the with the guy like that. But the, the circuit, the, the 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 events that led up, he it just the thing is, well, if you look, if you really look at it, if we're being honest, I mean, he only really had a good year and a half. Yeah, his first year and a half. The first year and a half, he was on fire. Yeah, and absolutely. And then after that, it's just – that's it. But I can say he had an impact. That year and a half, he had a huge, huge impact. I mean, he was there longer than a year and a half. I'm just saying his 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 super run was a year and a half. That was the highlight of his career was that yeah. year and a half. Year and a half. After that, he, he came – it was started yeah. declining. But he had an impact. He had an impact, which is why he's still getting paychecks to this day, just because of that 97 into 98. Pretty much. So say what you want to say about the guy, but he had an impact. 
So can can I still say now that can he still do it? Yes, no. to an extent. No, 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 he sucks. I do. Do I agree with putting him in title match? He almost killed the Undertaker, match? man. <laughs> in, in fairness, they almost killed each other. Brock well, Lesnar almost, almost killed the Undertaker. You're not saying nothing about him. Yeah, but he knocked dude. him out and ruined his streak. No, but that was that was by accident. And Undertaker, until this day, Undertaker doesn't even know where he got knocked out in that match. He doesn't know where he got concussed. He's watched it over, and he still can't tell. I think for a day just, and a half, he didn't even know his name. <laughs> right. I mean, Goldberg almost killed him. He dropped him on his head, man. So, you know, I don't want to. I don't want to take a dump on the guy. I like Goldberg, but you know, it's over for him. But <laughs> unfortunately, he has a. He he signed a three year deal up. He's got three matches left on this contract because he's got one match left this year. All right, so that's our Goldberg episode in WCW. We're gonna cover in his uh, WWE run next. You guys, let, yeah, his first run, which is the only real one run in my opinion. But you know, anyway, um, yeah. So you guys, let us know what you think about Goldberg's career. You know, your favorite Goldberg moments, uh, and what you thought about his run and uh, his, his WCW run. Make sure to like, comment, share, subscribe. We'll see you guys soon. Take care, guys.